At the beginning of Critical Role Campaign 3, I did a video where I dressed up as Fern, Imogen, and Laudna, and people's favorite joke to make in the comments was, now cosplay FCG. Well, be careful what you wish for. I've been wanting to do this costume since the Campaign 3 premiere. I saw it in theaters with my friends Jesse and Laura, aka Ford and the Ruby of the Sea, or Grog and Vex. Laura decided right then and there to cosplay Laudna, and I was pretty sure I wanted to do Fern, but I hate announcing costume plans too early in case I change my mind. So when Laura tweeted our thoughts, I deflected with a joke about fresh cut grass. That's when the wheels started turning. Or should I say the wheel? Laura and I brainstormed 90% of this costume that very night in the movie theater. I bought most of the material then, way back in October, but things got busy and they ended up just sitting in my closet for months gathering dust. Until today! In this video, I'm gonna cosplay Fresh Cut Grass with a twist, and I'm even gonna sing a song because I'm extra. Let's roll! Let me explain a few things in case you're confused. Critical Role is an actual play D&D show. Fresh Cut Grass is a cute little automaton cleric from the current campaign played by Sam Regal. When cosplaying a character like FCG, you kind of have two options. You can build a whole ass mech suit, or you can adapt it. Big builds aren't really my area of interest in cosplay, so I decided to reimagine Fresh Cut Grass as a vintage pinup girl. Those of you who have been around for a while may know that that is my area of interest. This is gonna be a one day build because I'm just just making it easy on myself and modifying a bunch of existing garments, so let's get to it. Let's start with the dress. I picked up this cute little yellow swing dress on Amazon for like 35 bucks. I don't want to go too crazy with making it look robot-y, but I think that the little blue panels would be so cute along sort of like a princess seam. So I'm gonna pattern that out and then basically just top stitch it onto the dress like an applique. Now, before I stitch these on, the dress fabric is honestly pretty close to FCG's color, but some of the accessories I got are darker, and it's a lot easier to darken the dress than to lighten the accessories, so time to die. I don't have any extra fabric to do test swatches, so this is gonna be a leap of faith, which I guess is fitting for a cleric. Praise be, the color came out pretty perfect. It's in the dryer now, so let's switch gears to some accessories while we wait. FCG has one yellow arm and one blue arm, so I picked up some cute 50s driving gloves and I am going to customize them with leather paint. These colors are not right, so I'm gonna try mixing in some acrylic paint like an absolute mad woman. Does somebody have guidance? Because I'm gonna need it. Okay, I changed my mind a few times while painting these and ended up spending half an hour scrubbing off the gray paint that I had just applied, but I think they came out okay. A little messy, but so is FCG. He has a grass symbol on his chest, so I'm thinking the best way to translate that to a vintage vibe is to make a little brooch. So I'm gonna whip that up out of Sculpey modeling clay. Okay, I just super glued some pin backs onto it and now it is done. It is shoe time! So I know FCG only has one wheel and there are a lot of ways that I could bring that into this design, but in the end, I'm just such a sucker for cute T-strap heels. So I'm just gonna glue some wheels to them and call it a day. I got this dump truck at the thrift store to cannibalize. Here they are! 
can't believe how well that yellow matches. I didn't even have to paint anything. The last accessory is going to be a little pillbox cap. FCG has these little fraying wires on top of his head, so I'm gonna use those where most pillbox caps would have like a bow or a veil. And I also wasn't quite sure what to do with the buzz saw blade that he wears on his back, but I didn't want to leave it out. So I'm thinking that I'll make a little mini saw blade out of foam and put it on the hat just to make sure that it's involved. My foam got a little floppy, but I guess that's what I get for trying to spray paint while it's raining. Overall, I think it came out pretty cute. Speaking of the buzz saw, I was looking at the art, and even though I'm not putting the blade on my back, I kind of didn't want to lose the leather straps look since you can see them from the front. So I'm gonna take this, it's like a belt from a suede coat that I thrifted once, and just add some snaps so that it can be wrapped around the arms, almost like bolero jacket style. The dress is finally dry. I have just steamed it, and now I can finally add those blue panels. Home stretch! It's all done! I will see you tomorrow for the big reveal. Smile and die to you. Today we are going to shoot some pinup photos. And rather than just using generic pinup poses, I really like recreating actual classic pinup illustrations. So I have this book from my favorite pinup artist, Gil Elfgren, and I've picked out three pinups that I want to recreate as fresh cut grass. We are going to start with this one, which is called Bird's Eye View. This was painted in 1942. It's a common trend in pinups, women getting their skirts caught on things. So I wanted to do a play on this one with some electrical cords referencing FCG's ability, sympathetic binding. Get it, cause binding, like binding. Okay, for the next one, I wanted to reference his name and shoot one where I am laying in, you guessed it, fresh cut grass. Or more accurately, artificial turf that I got from the hardware store. I've actually recreated this pinup before as Ashling for one of my D&D &D calendars, but this just seemed like too good of a fit to pass up. For the last one, I thought since I put the wheels on the shoes for this costume, it might be fun to do a little bit of a play on like a flat tire, because there's a bunch of pinups where girls have their shoes off. The foot guys, they've always been here. So next we're gonna do this one, a polished performance. Opinions are like opera. You could listen to them, but why would you really? When you could be listening to this Doris Day cover that I did for some reason. It's a smiley day today. So whatever you've got to do, you got a smiley day to do it in. That's true. And I hope whatever you've got to
to do is something that can be done by two. For I'd really like to stay. It's a smartly day today. And whatever you've got to do, I'd be so happy. But if you've got something that must be done, and it can only be done by one, there is nothing more to say, except it's a smiley day for saying, it's a smiley day. If you've got something that must be done, and it must be done by only one, there is nothing more to say. It's a smiley day. It's a smiley, smiley, smiley day. If you want an MP3 of that, you can get it for free at the link in the description because it felt like a very silly thing to put on Spotify. Thank you for sticking with me through this weird, fresh cut grass variety show of a video. I will be back here next week with your regularly scheduled D&D videos. And in the meantime, if you want more Critical Role cosplay and music, check out my Critical Role playlist. I've done a lot of it. I'm just a tiny little bit obsessed. <laughs>